Hi, I'm Alicia Ladenberg, Education and Research Program Manager at the Lupus Foundation of America. We're here at the American College of Rheumatology's annual meeting in San Diego, 2017. Um, and so we're here with Dr. Dilpreet Singh, Rheumatology Fellow with the Case Western Metro Health Medical Center in Cleveland. And she's going to tell us more today about her study on the prevalence of blindness in a cohort of rheumatologic patients treated with hydrochloroquine. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Singh. Um, so what is the biggest takeaway from your study? Well, my study um, comprises of a large cohort of patients, up to about 3,000 patients at Metro Health um, that use hydroxychloroquine for conditions such as lupus, as well as other indications like rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory arthritis. And I looked specifically to see how many of these patients are blind. And, and from the cohort, none of the patients um, ever were blind from hydroxychloroquine use. Um, there were 31 patients that had a diagnosis of either blindness or um, adverse reaction from hydroxychloroquine, and three of them had the, the adverse reaction, um, and that was detected through screening and without any visual impairment or any symptoms that they were experiencing. Um, and so three out of 3,000 is a very small number. It's very rare, so it's, it's reassuring. Um, and, and for us, from the 30 uh, what other patients that are, were blind or had any visual impairment, it was related to other reasons such as high blood pressure, diabetes, kidney disease, so other conditions that coexist with lupus or, the, or your, your arth rheumatoid arthritis, um, which are actually quite common in our patients. Mm -hmm. Um, as you can imagine and so so from the take-home point is that it's reassuring that the adverse reaction that we we know about with hydroxychloroquine affecting the eyes is very rare and that we should also be making sure that we're we're treating our other conditions the diabetes and the and and your blood pressure and making sure that's being managed appropriately with with your primary care physician um, working with us um, yeah. So are there any guidelines in place right now that take into account the possibility um, and decrease or in take into account and possibly decrease the role of um, comorbid conditions that what they play in vision loss? So there's no specific guidelines in place to like reduce um, the incidence of these comorbidities. Um, it's known that lupus patients and um, specifically lupus patients and other rheumatic are rheumatic patients have higher risk of having cardiovascular disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. And so, um, just having the disease, you are at higher risk. So it's really important that you make sure that you you're up to date with your primary care visits, your wellness visits, and um, you're taking care of these conditions and not neglecting it. And also your lupus disease as well. Right. Yeah. Right. Wonderful. And so are there any plans for future study or work on this issue or what are next steps? Well, I'll be um, working to publish this. Um, so I presented um, this, this research study here at the ACR meeting, and um, my next step will to be publish this. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much again for joining us today. Really appreciate your time, and we look forward to hearing more about the study in the future. And stay tuned for our next interview coming up later on.